Hey guys, it's so good to be back together again. We're going to continue on with our stories about Joseph. Now, last time we were together, Joseph had been doing pretty well. He was put as house, head of the household of Potiphar's family, and then Potiphar's wife told some lies about him. And she went and told Potiphar, and Potiphar became very angry with Joseph and threw him in prison. Now we're gonna find out what's gonna to happen to him next, but before we do that, let's worship God and glorify him by standing up and singing some songs together.
sometimes in life, things seem impossible and it seems like there's no way out. But just like God did with Joseph, God has our back. And if we're obedient to him, he'll lead us into the plan that he has for our life. Before we go into that, let's find out what the question of the day is. I like to bake. Today in our story, we're going to learn about a baker. What's your favorite thing to eat that's baked? My favorite baked item is apple pie. And I remember my mom making apple pie and she made everything from scratch, from the crust uh, to the inside. And then we would come home from school and it would be hot. We put a big scoop of ice cream on it. And I tell you, there's not nothing better than hot apple pie. And uh, I'm just gonna indulge right now. Mmm, mmm, that's good. What I like to do is make cookies. Chocolate chip cookies are my favorite, and I'm going to bake some. I think they're done. Oh, perfect. Now I'm going to try one. Mm. One of my favorite baked items is a cinnamon roll. It's always amazed me how they can take a cup of sugar and some other things and throw it all together and come out with something so yummy and delicious. I think I'm just going to have to take a taste of this right now. Mm. And as the Galloping Gourmet used to say, mmm, so good. Yum, yum, yummy. Those are some great things to bake. Mmm. Oh man, those things look yummy. Now I'm hungry. I wish I had some of those baked items. Hey, I hear that Grandma Gertie has some recipes from her mama. Let's go see if she can show us how to bake something. Well, hey there, kiddos. Granny Gerda here. You know, I've been thinking on some things today. Ever since I talked to you about my mama's special homemade chocolate chip cookies, I can't get them out of my mind. I would so love to make me some chocolate chip cookies, so we're going to do that today. Now, when making cookies and whenever you're baking, it's really important to start with a recipe. I'm going to use this recipe that has been passed down from my granny to my mama to me. And remember, back when I was a youngin, I remember back when I was a youngin and I would go to granny's house and walk into her kitchen and I would smell the wonderful smell of these cookies here a bacon. And you have to make sure you put just the right ingredients together in just the right order or these here cookies don't come out just right. I think I might have some photos of things I've baked that didn't turn out quite right. Let's take a look and see. <laughs> oh, that's good. If you decided to do it a different way or tried to substitute an ingredient instead of sticking with this here recipe, it can turn out quite horrible. For instance, if I decided that, no, I don't want to put sugar in this here recipe, but I want to put salt in instead, could you imagine how bad that would taste? Yuck! One way of saying it is to say we need to obey the recipe to make it as good as my granny used to make it. And you know what, kiddos? We also need to always obey God and trust that he can make everything turn out okay. God can use our hard times to help someone else with their hard times. We need to trust God and obey God even when we can't see his plan. Let's say that together. We need to trust and obey God even when we can't see his plans. Now, let's go see how those cookies turned out.
Oh, just the way my mama made them. Well, I might just have to try just one. Mmm, my goodness. Well, guys, it was great talking with you. Snuggles and huggles to you. Bye-bye now. Love your Granny Gertie. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. We find truth and purpose to love God and love others. We're searching God's word for things to discover. is alive <laughs> it's good to see you back i have my bible ready i hope you have your bible ready so we're going to be looking at the book of genesis so if you kind of just open your bible it should be you should come right to it it should say genesis right there at the top if it doesn't just flip back a little bit until you get to genesis we're going to be going to chapter 41 what we have is we have big numbers. We call those our chapters. So chapter 41. Now, if you need your parents' help, feel free to just grab them and ask them to help you a little bit. We're gonna find that 41. Mine happens to be orange. Yours may be black or maybe a different color, but go ahead and look for that. Once you find that 41, we are going to go way down. We're looking for those little tiny numbers. Those little tiny numbers we call verses. So we're gonna look down and we're going to go to verse 14. So verse 14, you're gonna find that little tiny 14. Now, I'm gonna tell us a little bit about the story. Um, Joseph was in prison. There were a couple guys in there with him who he was able to interpret their dreams. They had dreams and he was able to tell them what they meant. And now Potiphar had a dream. And so he wants to know if Joseph can help him interpret his dream. So in verse 14, it says, so Pharaoh sent for Joseph, and he was quickly brought from the dungeon. When he was shaved and changed his clothes, he came before Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream, and no one can interpret it, but I have heard it said that you, uh, when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. I cannot do it, Joseph replied to Pharaoh, but God will give Pharaoh the answer for he desires. So Joseph is saying, I'm just a man, I just I listen to God and then God can help me tell you what they mean. So I think that's really cool. Let's go ahead and watch the video now and find out what happens. So Joseph went to jail and stayed there for more than two years. Still, God was with Joseph. One day, the king had two dreams that nobody could figure out. Two guys in the jail got fired from Pharaoh's palace and had crazy dreams one night. God told Joseph what the dreams meant. Pharaoh's waiter had a dream about grapes and juice. It meant that he would get his job back. Whoa, that's cool. Pharaoh's baker had a dream about a basket of bread that some birds ate. It meant that he would be put to death. Whoa, that stinks. Unfortunately for Joseph, Pharaoh's waiter forgot to tell Pharaoh about his dream reading buddy Joseph. Until now, that is. What did Pharaoh dream? Seven fat cows. Then seven skinny cows came and ate those fat cows. Whoa, seven fat stalks of grain waving in the wind. Then seven shriveled up stalks of grain ate those fat stalks. Whoa, what could these dreams mean? But what do they mean? What do they mean? Suddenly, Someone who just got out of jail remembered Joseph and knew he could interpret dreams. Joseph was quickly brought to the palace. Okay, Joseph, explain. Um, well, I can't explain, but God can. He'll tell the dreams to me, and I will explain them to you. And it happened just like that. Pharaoh told Joseph about the dreams, and Joseph explained that there would be seven years of good weather. Hey, that's great! And then seven years of bad weather. Oh, that's bad. What do you think we should do? Move to California? 
No. What you should do is find someone who's really smart, who can save up food during the seven years of good weather, so that no one goes hungry during the seven years of bad weather. Huh, great idea. Say, what are you doing for the next 14 years? Me? Well, um, I live down at the jail, you know, so uh, I don't have a lot going on right now. Great, you got the job. Sweet, thanks. So, just like Joseph had told the cupbearer and the baker, those dreams came out the way that he had interpreted them. Interpretation means that he kind of tells them what they mean. And so the cupbearer is so happy about this, and he's like, we're going to tell everybody about it, and I bet you're going to get out of prison. But then the cupbearer forgets all about Joseph. And so Joseph sits in prison for like two more years, just sitting there waiting to find out if he's going to be able to get out. And then Pharaoh who is like the king, I think I said it might have said Potiphar earlier, but actually Pharaoh's the king, Potiphar is like his helper, and so Pharaoh has this dream, and nobody can tell him what it means, nobody can interpret it for him, and so then the cupbearer remembers, hey, I had this friend, his name's Joseph, he's sitting in prison, and he interpreted a dream for me, so Pharaoh says, well, I'll go get Joseph, so sure enough, he goes and he gets Joseph, and Joseph can tell him with God's help, what the dream means and, and Pharaoh is so excited and that he decides that that Joseph should be able to be over his household so again a really hard time for Joseph and yet he continued to obey he continued to listen to God and and God made things good for him so now let's go find out what Techie Tom is up to Nice to see you guys again. Techie Tom here. And today I've been working on a unbreakable egg. Well, sort of unbreakable. As soon as it hits pans, it's supposed to break. So, uh, I've been working on it and I've noticed one thing. In terms of working, I'm using quite a bit of high-level math. And I started thinking, you know, the only reason I can do high-level math is because I learned math when I was younger. It's so important to learn things in a certain order, right? To, to do algebra, to do uh, pre-calculus, to do trigonometry, to do any of the higher level maths, even if you get into calculus or statistics or anything, you have to know your basis. You have to have a good foundation. That foundation comings, comes from learning from the beginning. So you learn numbers zero through 10 or zero through nine actually, because then you can begin to rearrange those numbers. You take a one and a zero and it becomes 10 and one and a one, one and a two, one and a three. And you learn your foundations of your numbers. And then you learn addition and subtraction, multiplication, division. You learn it all in an order. And you have to learn those things in order to do really cool science tricks, right? Started thinking about our lives. Our lives are similar to that as well. We learn things in an order. Our lives go in a certain order. So as we live, we grow, we learn, we know more. You know, sometimes we don't understand what is happening in our life at any given moment. Sometimes our mom says, stop that, go do your homework. And we think, why do I have to go do my homework? I'm never going to be a physicist. I'm going to be a soccer player or football player or a musician or whatever. But there's important things to all of that, right? There's important layers upon layers. And so it's important to learn the foundations before we even learn anything else. Our spiritual life is the same way. Sometimes things in our life happen and we don't understand why they're happening, but God is going to use those things in the future to change other people's lives. Our passage, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future come in a time when Israel didn't understand what was happening. They didn't see the end goal. They only saw what was going on right now. But God had a plan and God knew what was happening. So I want to encourage you, no matter how old you are, no matter what you're doing, God has a plan and God is going to use all of the things in your life 
for good, for greatness. God might not cause the bad things to happen, but God will use those bad things to change the lives of others and even you. So, you want to see if this works? See if we can actually cause it to break? Well, are you ready? Let's see. What do you think? So Joseph had some pretty awful things happen in his life. But you know what? Through it, he learned that he could trust God. He could have faith in God. As long as he was obedient to God, God was going to show his plan to him. And Joseph did a good job with that. Now, sometimes in our life, things seem like they're all messed up. And you're just wondering what in the world is going on. But through that, if you trust and obey God, then he will show you that he is there with us through it all. And he has a far greater plan for your life. So what I need you to do, I need you to continue to read your Bibles. I need you to continue to pray and listen to God. And he's going to show you exactly what the plan is for him. So this week, I want you to remember that. And I also want you to remember that you are loved.